Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. everyone, welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you today. This is Self-Realization and the Inner Child, Part 20. Part 20, 20 shows we have done on this topic, Self-Realization and the Inner Child. And it's an honor and a pleasure to do this show. This is a topic that's really near and dear to me. And I brought with me my friends. So... There is Nadine Searle. Hi, Nadine. Yeah. Hello, hello. I'm pleased to be with you today. It's wonderful to have you. And uh, James Elphick is with us again. Hello, James. Hello. Nice to be here again. Thank you for the reoccurring invites. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, it's wonderful to have you part of this unfolding discussion so that we can continue on encouraging everyone to connect with their inner child, and like we're going to talk about today, what is it like to connect with our inner teenager? And we're going to have that yeah. discussion. So that's fun. And now I want to introduce you all to Susan Axelrod, who is the Confidence Coach and is a beloved sponsor of this podcast and this show. Welcome to the show today, Susan. Thank you so much. I'm Honestly, delighted to be here with you. I've been listening to the podcasts. I've been moved to my core. And I just couldn't be happier to sponsor this show with the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group. Yes, thank you so much. So, you know, thank now, you. especially in this time period, I can't even imagine uh, what it would be like if we wouldn't have our inner family to keep us company. So the inner child, the inner mother, the inner father, the inner teenager, the inner cousins, uh, the inner family, right? The inner tribe. And then of course, uh, our relationships that support us in co-creating our new earth together, because that's what we're uh, doing. And even though there's a lot of chaos in the world right now, uh, that's usually what happens when we are at the precipice of something beautiful and something um, miraculous that's taking place. And I really do believe that. I really do believe that we are moving into, into a more freedom-based society and uh, that we are right now at the end of the old systems all showing themselves so that we can see it. Just like, uh, you know, the inner child, when the inner child is having a fit, you know, the the abandoned child or the 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 saboteur that comes calling. It's it's that kind of energy. It's the energy of being able to witness, to see everything that needs to be seen so that we can feel it and that we can meet it and we can see our miscreations of the past. And it starts, you know, it starts at home. It starts with each and every one of us remembering who it is that we are and that we have the power right here and right now to say, I'm here for the new earth and I'm here for the harmonization and I'm here for freedom or you're clinging to the old systems and you're hanging on for dear life. So it's never too late to have a happy childhood is what I called this podcast today. I thought that was really good, especially right now. We're rewriting the story of our lives and we can co-create and we can write what it is that we're subscribing to and what it is that we're energizing, the thoughts we're energizing, the habits we're energizing, the actions that we're taking. We are the empowered creators and we're the ones that are making the new earth a reality by the choices we make every day. So welcome everyone. Wow. 
Cornelia? Yes. I just want to let viewers know, I keep looking down because I'm already taking notes. I always oh. do that with your podcast. I get my notebook out, I listen, but now I'm here in person. So I just want to <laughs> let you know, I'm taking notes. I learn every time. Oh my gosh, I am learning too. I am learning, you know, all the time of right now, again, being present with everything that's unfolding mm -hmm. in the world. I have to sit back myself and remind myself where to put my energy to and remember who it is that I am and what I want to energize and what I'm standing for and what it is that I am here for to create. So learning that, you know, I'm not going to go down the fear and go down the rabbit hole that, no, I didn't come here for this. I came here for this. Mm. And so we're here to bring love into the world. That's what we're here to do. And that's what we're here to energize. Yeah. That's where we have agency with our love and with our passion and with our compassion. And so today we want to talk a little bit about, I thought it would be great if we go around, James, we'll start with you since you were the one that suggested that we play today with the inner teenager. Mm -hmm. And so why don't we start with you? Like how, do, how does one, like, what do you do? What do you do with your inner teenager? How does your inner teenager come out and uh, play with you? Sure. I mean, the inner teenager's energy is huge, you know, and sometimes it can feel like it even overshadows the inner child because the energy is so big and there's such a, a power there. But through, you know, conditioning and struggles within the teenage years, there can be, um, it can be uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable for, for the teenager to show himself in, a, in, in the way that he wants to. So... I found like building a trust with my inner teenager since I've discovered him is so important to reparent him, to be a role model for him where he couldn't find a role model in his school days, in his family life. I can become that, that role model. And this is a slow process. There can be a, a, a trust that needs to be built. Um, teenagers, you know, they, they don't like being told what to do. They're always trying to forge new ways uh, into life. And that's their strength. That's their real uh, purpose is to, is to bring in fresh ideas in, fresh perspectives. But if they're a little bit different, like mine were when I was a teenager, then they can be kind of, um, you know, poo-pooed or, well, maybe that's not the right route. Maybe you need to go down this route. Have you tried this more conventional. So I'm here now to really give him the, the listening ear um, that truly sees him, um, not away from what I feel is best for him, but what he feels is best. Um, and with this teenage energy, there can be this, you know, kicking and fighting. And for me, as, a, as to reparent him, to give boundaries, but Give, give reasons why I'm giving boundaries, you know, not just no, that's enough. It's like, this is the reason why. So I can manage this energy inside of me and bring, well, a bit of peace and a bit of comfort to this teenager that's always on the, on the go, it seems. So, yeah, I've, um, yeah, it's been a, it's, it's a, it's an ongoing journey as it is with the inner child. Um, but it's so rewarding once you have that energy coming in through in a more healthy, balanced way. Um, I have written a list of um, signs, if I have a little bit of time to, to read signs. So I've got a few signs that your inner child is looking for healing and attention. So number one can be confusion, pressure and frustration about purpose and belonging. Uh, he can feel volatile, combative, uh, feeling that he hasn't a space for other people's points of view. There can be risky, unhealthy behavior, an impulsion to be free, and that without consequences. There can be dramatic behavior, slamming doors, swearing, storming off. So these are all things that can come sort of come through our adult life if we're not seeing the teenager and then there's the signs that our inner teenager has been seen and felt and heard 
And that can be excitement and positivity and clarity towards purpose. Uh, energetically fiery, but with a vital energy, able to communicate in a balanced way, taking turns and bringing fresh uh, perspectives to communication. A healthy appetite for adventure, feeling wild and free, bringing new hobbies and trips away, taking risks, but having them thinking about the risks first. And with all that physical energy that comes through a teenager, there can be, this can be channeled towards healthy physical activities such as sports, new ideas, projects. Um, so he gets a lot done, the teenage energy, and that can be harnessed and brought into our adult life. And it can be a, a wonderful relationship once that energy is kind of harnessed and healed. Um, it can be a very, very creative energy. So I'm really enjoying this ongoing relationship with my my inner teenager. Yeah, I just I love that idea. Susan, you were gonna say something? Oh my gosh. I wanna say, James, I work primarily with women in the second half of life. I work with them to feel more confident as your life and body changes and a lot of things change and also to be in business. But what you just described describes uh, on the signs of that the inner teenager hasn't been heard describes a lot of uh, what women say about their husbands. And I, I'm having mm -hmm. a very deep experience right now where I'm going to have to listen to this again over and over to integrate this and share this to help people say, because in my experience, I could speak to your inner teenager if I go there as a man. I love, I love Cornelia. You know, you've worked to bring men into the conversation. And James, you're using the word him. I love this. I mm. love everything about this. So thank you. Um, I This is a very big thing for me. Thank you for sharing. I, I, I feel welcome. like we need the role models of James. Yeah. Yeah. We, we so need, this is, the, this is the work that's so needed. When you were speaking, James, you were talking about when you were mentioning the list of the, mm. the healthy, I should say, inner uh, teenager the teenager that is feeling excited and inspired to, uh, you know, feel free to create and and what the actions of the inner teenager would be, right? And mm -hmm. when when that's not the case, mm -hmm. when that's not the case, when the opposite is playing out for so many people, and then where that leads them through the course mm -hmm. of their life, and then it brings. The conversation that Susan was talking about, the the men that haven't healed their mm -hmm. inner child, their inner teenager, and then bringing that into a relationship where mm -hmm. that that is not in balance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why your yeah, work, yeah. your modeling is so important, James. We need, you know, we need. Uh, more men like you that are out there that are openly talking about this and modeling what it's like to begin the process. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think the recognition just um, of of that teenage energy it can create havoc. It can create havoc in relationships if the teenager. In, in many traditions, there would be an initiation for the boy to go in from teenager into man. We don't have it in this culture. So the teenager doesn't develop into, into a man very easily. So that energy is just carried on, carried on through adult life. Um, there can be a surface appearance of a man, but underneath there's a teenager angry, wanting to fight, wanting to um, frustrated at his life. He's unable to step up into this, into this mature masculinity. So, yeah, I, I, I hear that. I mean, for myself, I still have to manage the teenager inside of me. Or not manage, but have to be there for him. Otherwise, he can wreak havoc. He can walk out the door and say, oh, that's enough. Or, you know, <laughs> he can, he's very impulsive, very... Um, volatile and 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 for me to harness that energy into something that can create 
a mature expression of masculinity. He's part of it. He's part of the, the key to, to, to building that. If he's just suppressed, then there's a kind of uh, just, uh, you know, no energy. He brings a lot of energy to... This is mind blowing. This is so great. Thank you, everyone, for bringing your energy to this room. Thank you for committing to this conversation. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this conversation and to sponsor this podcast. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, James, how do you know? Because this is what, you know, what I was thinking that people are going to be asking. How do you know? Mm. It's your inner teenager and not your inner mm. child kind of mm. thing. Like, how do you make that distinction? Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, I think for me now, I just feel I, I can just sense they have different, they have different energies. My, my inner child can have tantrums as well. It can be quite wild and volatile. Um, but he's not, there's just a different energy. And for me, meditation has been the key, just to gently go inside to feel who's there and just to say, who's there? What's going on? And there's usually, like you were speaking earlier, Cornelia, there's, a, there's an inner part there. There's a mother, a father, a child, a teenager. And if we listen really carefully, then that voice will come up and it will say, oh, well, it's me and I'm a bit fed up about this and I'm... and and who is this? And, oh, it's me. And then there's a picture of, or an image or a feeling that it's the child or the teen, or the teenager or the, or the, the you know, the, um, the, the mother, the inner mother or the inner, inner father. Um, so it's hard to put it as a um, exact science, as it were, <laughs> of how you can just, the two how you can find I, I, I think you I think you touched it because by asking yeah. by asking the question who's there the answer that mm. comes back then could be the inner the inner child mm. would be saying it's the inner child or it's the inner teenager and and generally what happens when we ask that question see if this is true for you also is there is either a wound from the past, a memory mm. from the past that is coming up during that mm. time when we were that inner teenager as well. Mm. There's a memory of something that comes up that needs to be addressed. Mm. And by you being curious and saying, who's there? Mm -hmm. who, who, who's there right now? Who's, who, who needs attention? Who needs nurturing? Who needs love? Mm -hmm. By asking that question, then you know that's where the unification can happen where the you know the love can happen and the healing can happen there is that right yeah that feels right it's usually if there's some the louder the voice the more it wants to be listened to and mm -hmm. the more desperate it is to be listened to so if there's something that's going on and it's loud and it's painful all that voice is wanting to all that all that energy is wanting to have is to be felt seen listened to and ultimately loved and healed so once that voice is heard and listened to and loved then it becomes quiet it come it becomes quieter or there's more ease and there's more joy there's more freedom so it doesn't feel so needy as it were and that's the same with the inner child it doesn't feel as needy all of the time because it's happy he knows that he's got a parent that's looking out for him he can play he can enjoy himself the teenager can go on adventures and that all kind of weaves in with the adult life so the adult life has got a blend of teenager um child uh, adult mother father energy and that all weaves in into a healthy expression of life the teenager can bring his wildness his sense of adventure his you know into the adult life in a um, healthy way in a healthy way. In exactly. a healthy way. Yes. And yes. that's what I, I want to really say is I do this work. The reason I wanted to sponsor this podcast, I asked Cornelia, may I sponsor you? She didn't ask me, will you sponsor us? I said, may I sponsor you? And the reason is that in my work, I find this. I, you know, sometimes you ask Cornelia, how do you, you know, identify? James says the exact right answer. You ask the question of yourself. Some people do need coaches. 
to help them have that direct conversation. I didn't go about doing this. This came up through my intuitive work. And I realized I was speaking to an inner child soul, soul persona, I call it. And then in my work, one person, literally, I knew it was the girl. I knew it was the teenager. I knew it was a 23 year old when you're really tuned in and they will literally speak through that voice to you. So that's really, you know, Nadine's work as a calmer self coach. Nadine, when you help somebody, you know, get into that calm space, yeah. that's when you can open up and listen. Then and you exactly, you're giving that space, aren't you? Space to grow like you do, James. And it's absolutely right. Tuning in, it is giving permission, actually giving that moment to say, permission. yes, I'm listening. And, and as you brought me in, I won't say too much about it, but that idea of as teenagers, we weren't heard, were we? We weren't heard. So to tap back, and like you say, uh, we're all coaches, we all guide people, we all hold that lovely space for people and help them how to tap in. Like you say, James, to know who we're speaking to. We guide mm -hmm. people with that, don't we? So it is, mm -hmm. and that is mostly what the inner teenager, in my experience, does want to be heard. And then mm -hmm. the healing is, is actually through that process, isn't it? So it's beautiful to be able to do this for ourselves and definitely for other people. Well, when we look at our, our parents' generation, when we look at our parents' generation of how, how the evolution of how they were brought up to live, and certainly the inner child wasn't talked about. It, you know, we always had to be quiet and don't yep. uh, make noise and don't stand out and don't be too this or yep. that, or certainly not, you know, children are supposed to be, um, you know, what was it? My mom would give us this one look, it just one look. Yeah. It would be like, be seen okay. and not heard, wasn't it? Yeah, be seen and not heard. Yeah, children are supposed to be seen, not heard kind of thing, or I, I can't remember exactly, but mm -hmm. that generation is what we are um, healing. And, you know, because we're doing the work for ourselves now today for our own inner child, and then we're also doing um, the work of our ancestral lineage of all the children that have never been heard before, all the inner children, the inner teenager, all, all of the past. And basically what it all comes down to is everyone wants to be heard. Mm. Mm. Everyone <laughs> wants to be people in there. Yeah, it's at that place. And, and, you know, it's like when we can talk about our fears. So the inner teenager, the inner child talks about its fears about how it felt left out, how it felt that it doesn't have a voice, how it felt that it's not important and it doesn't matter, whatever, whatever it is. It, it's this is the cries of our humanity that we all have and that we're all that we're all healing. And like James said, once you start listening, after a while, it becomes quieter and quieter and quieter. Mm -hmm. Same for our humanity, because once we start listening and once we start, uh, you know, hearing what what it all is with everyone wanting to be heard, which which we see a lot playing out on a global scale right now with yes. Kinds of things, people standing up and wanting to be heard in in whatever capacity, and once we do that, things will calm down more. Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. and because we're returning back to our true nature, and that is bringing that back into. You used the word. I heard it. It's still uh, reverberating in me. In balance, mm -hmm. in balance. And as we're now moving into the equinox right? The spring equinox yeah. here is, is really bringing that balance, bringing everything into balance, into harmony and whatever has been out of balance that we unify and bring it back into healing and wholeness. And James, I must say, you said to me earlier that I am radiating, but I must <laughs> say that you are radiating. You're yes. like crazy. Am I right, ladies? Yes, oh, yes, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah. I, I would like to say something, Cornelia. Uh, Cornelia Stephanie is my co sometimes coach, sometimes partner, always friend, and almost always spiritual mentor. So what you just said, this conversation, if people listen carefully to all of this, you talked about the ancestral legacy and healing of ancestral legacy. Yeah. 
And so Cornelia has helped me do that. Or I guess maybe you might say see it or realize it. Like, I think it's more like that. I would be doing it, but I wouldn't know it unless my consciousness about it were raised. This conversation we're having today is raising a consciousness to a whole new level about distinguishing in the soul personas, that teenage soul. What you laid out for us, James, is so beautiful, as I said before. And I encourage women to go ahead, listen to this podcast again with pen and paper and write your yeah. own signs of um, when the inner teenager for you hasn't been heard. Mm -hmm. And signs that the inner teenager has been heard. And then I wrote down, mm -hmm. how do you harness the energy? You also talked about that. That's an exercise all of us can do and I will be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a good one to do, I think. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. that's really. And that's I, really I think this conversation as well as giving, it's a word I use quite often, isn't it? Giving us all permission to just investigate. And like you say, just have a little moment to go, what is my inner child? And celebrate. Because that inner teenager, like you said, James, is full of fire, full of energy, full of, mm -hmm. I'd like to say, in a good way, selfishness. You know, my inner mm -hmm. teenager was so self-centered. Mm -hmm. And I like to dip back into that and remember what it was like just to care about me, not worry about anything else. I do a lot of my work, and we're all the same. We encourage people to do self-care, don't we? And I yeah. use that, like you say, meditation, taking people back and go, what were you like when you were a teenager? How on fire were you? How selfish were you? How focused were you? How much energy did you have? Let's tap back into that and use it now. So mm -hmm. in total celebration of our inner teenager, let's dip back in as often as we can and get that fire going. And, I, you mm -hmm. know, it's celebration. I'm, I'm really feeling celebratory today. 20th episode. So yes. grateful for Cornelia for birthing this for us, James for joining us with that wonderful perspective and Susan for sponsoring us and joining in with it wholeheartedly. You know, let's celebrate our inner teenager and all of that, everything that comes with it and have a little dip in, like you say, Susan, let's do a little exercise and go, what was wonderful about our inner teenager? What is still there for us? Because all of it is still there, isn't it? It's exhilarating and <laughs> terrifying to yes. think about that. Yes. <laughs> it's so great. It is. Yeah, let's do it. The world would be a better why, place, wouldn't it? <laughs> the reason why this, this celebration is so perfect right now is because here we are, 2022. We are laying a foundation of our new earth. We're putting this new structures down. And let's bring out our inner children and our inner teenagers healed and okay. old and listened to we're, okay. as we're bringing love into the structures, as we're bringing love into business, as we're bringing love into our humanity, and that we're leading from, from that place of where we're creating spaces where we can really be heard. And that all begins at home. It begins with each person saying, I want to listen to you. I'm curious about you. And if you need support, there's plenty of support available. Yeah. So James, tell the audience where they can go because I know you do tours and you do nature walks and mm -hmm. you do all kinds of fabulous things with people. And I, uh, where can people check you out? Okay. Thank you. Um, well, I do, I do walks and, and, uh, in-person activities, but I'm also doing a lot more online. I've kind of jazzed up my offerings on, um, online. So the best place to find me actually is on Facebook. Um, James Elphick, E-L-P-H-I-C-K. You should recognize my um, photo. And then from there, you can go into the Space to Grow group. So there's a group there um, where you can share. You can share about your love of nature. You can share about your own inner journey, your own human nature. And there's some offerings. There's a free ebook on there about how to connect with nature. And I do post quite a lot on inner child work and 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 other things that are away a little bit from from the nature connection. So, yeah, find me on, on Facebook, um, James Elphick, E L P H I C K. I'm hoping to do some more um, retreat days, some more nature immersion days when it warms up, which is coming soon. So this spring and summer. So I'll update people on on that as they come up. So, yeah. And just to say a little bit about the, the the days, the nature immersion days, I encourage people to go and express their inner child. 
and also their inner teenager, which have both different energies. So the inner child may want to play, might be curious, and the inner teenager might want to run down a hill, climb a tree, go on an adventure. And that is the way for, for the, these inner parts to really express themselves in the physical, especially for men and young people. This is a real, uh, really important. It really helps strengthen trust and build confidence. So all are welcome, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to encourage more men to come along as well. So yes. yeah. Good. Good. We, we would love that. that. We would love for the men to come and join you so that yeah. we have mm. more, you know, yeah. of those healthy, you know, mm. men that are connected to their inner child and then bring mm. that to the relationship, to the relationship, mm -hmm. to, you know, mm -hmm. giving birth to the oh. new children. And yeah. I yeah. Would, uh, I just that. want to say one thing about the relationship part. When the inner the inner teenager is in a man, the man who is wanting to, um, he's ashamed of that in a way. He doesn't want to be a teenager. He wants to be a man. So any suggestion that he's acting in the teenage way will be pushed away. I'm not a teenager. I'm a man. How dare you kind of thing. So yeah. there's an approach to meet that inner teenager that has to be kind of sensitively sensitively done i think with a man it has to be okay there's something else there it doesn't really feel like you john bob it feels like some other energy what is that so it's in a more curious way rather than yeah. otherwise the man would just suppress that energy again and think oh my god i sh i'm ashamed of that because it's not ma it's not manly or it's not grown up so yeah. That's why you're the perfect person to uh, yeah. work with these men because you are a man and you know what it's like, and you have, mm -hmm. you, know, you are, you are, you know, in this process of helping others heal mm -hmm. their inner child and their inner teenager, mm -hmm. especially you know men and and young young boys or young men mm -hmm. or teenagers. Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. I think this is important. So definitely want everyone to check out your work. James, when you see this video on YouTube, you know, why don't you put your links in the yeah. description below, even yeah. on Facebook, yeah. put your links to where people can connect with you because uh, sometimes it's just nice to have those links there. When mm. people are seeing that they watch the video, then they want to just click that link and then just get it straight mm. from them. So I just want to call out, this is feminine energy business happening here. Because you won't see this with men. Men are not going to give other people an opportunity on their platform to promote their business. This is the balanced uh, leadership energy that Cornelia Stephanie brings through the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group. And I'm calling out what is there. Yeah. I really mm -hmm. am. And yeah. thank you, Susan. And while you're there doing that, well, how can we, your ideal woman, your ideal man, the people that you support, in the second half of their life, how can they find you? Take your phone, go to the Play Store, look up the KS Media Group app, download it, sign in, and look at under resources and um, find me under as a leading practitioner there. It, this is a space uh, where I'm happy to be, I'm proud to be, where listeners will find so much more content just like this, free and available through countless practitioners growing by the dozens at this point. So find me on the KS Media uh, Group app, and I would love to speak with you if you want to have more conversation. And just to give you another small plug, check out Susan Rapp Axelrod's YouTube channel called The Confidence Zone. I talk about it here when we do the podcast. So might as well go subscribe to her YouTube channel and, you know, get that confidence mm -hmm. going. And so she shares, uh, you know, lives pretty much every single day. So there's yeah. a lot of content that you can uh, support your confident life with. Thank and you. Thank you so much, Susan. And Nadine, would you like to say anything before we close? This yes, today? I'd love to quickly just echo what you just said about the fabulous Cornelia Stephanie Media Group app. We are all in there. There is so much in there. These podcasts go in there, don't they? There's more podcasts than all of us do. So they're all in there. And like you say, Susan, it's free. It's easy to access. So that is the place to tap in and get us and so much more. So it's never too late to have a happy childhood. You're going to see us again when we come back again next month with episode 21 and self-realization in the inner child. So this is our new earth that we're creating, co-creating together. And it's an honor and a pleasure sending you so much love, peace, and liberty. See you all again mm. soon.
Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.